Hello and welcome to episode 7 of Photography with Emery and that as usual is me. And on today's episode I'm going to talk about white balance. Let's begin by exploring some physics as it will help us better understand color temperatures which are almost always referenced when working with the white balance settings. So say hi to the black body, a theoretical object that absorbs 100% of all electromagnetic radiation it receives. In other words, the black body does not allow any radiation to go through it, nor reflects anything, and that includes light. When this object is completely cold, such as absolute zero on the Kelvin temperature scale, then a black body appears, you guessed it, completely black. But as the black body heats up, it starts to glow with a color that corresponds to a specific temperature. For example, when the black body glows red, the temperature is about 1000 Kelvin. When yellow, the temperature moves up to about 3500 Kelvin. At around 5500 to 6000 Kelvin, the black body is literally white hot. And beyond this temperature, the black body shifts into blue hues. And by the way, there is a little gotcha here that has to do with the technical and creative terminology. Sometimes photographs with a blue hue or tint are said to have a cool feel or a cool color cast, but this is misleading in regard to the actual color temperature because blue colors are actually very hot on the temperature scale. So keep in mind that cool is in reference to the aesthetic quality of the image, not the actual color temperature. On the opposite end of the spectrum, images with a more yellow or, or red hue are termed warm, but reds and yellows are represented by colder temperatures than white or blue. I wanted to mention this so you understand the difference between the technical and creative terminology, as more often than not, the creative terminology is used to describe the aesthetic feel of an image. Okay, so now you're likely starting to see that certain colors of light correspond to certain temperature values, but how does this tie into photography? Unlike our high resolution 3D cameras and vastly complex biological processors, aka our eyes and brains, digital cameras often get confused under certain lighting conditions. They simply can't always get neutral and white correct. This is primarily caused by the overall color temperature of the scene you're shooting and the camera's processor not being able to compute the correct values to compensate. For example, look at these two shots. The pick of the Rockies appears far too blue or cool, and the image of the moose is off. Notice how purple the animal is? This is a frequent artifact when there's a lot of green in a shot. But lucky for us, there are some easy techniques to use that can help us correct and even prevent such color casts from appearing. Let's first start with the camera's preset white balance settings. As usual, depending on the camera make or model, uh, you may see some slight differences. Usually these presets on a camera are ordered from warm to hot color temperature. For example, here are the settings on my Olympus E3 and their associated color temperatures. First up is lamp, which is basically used for uh, under warm incandescent lighting, which is listed at 3000 kelvins. There are three fluorescent lighting settings, uh, one at 4000, 4500 and 6600 kelvin. And there's a setting for flashes at 5500 kelvin and three outdoor settings, daylight, cloud and shade at 5300, 6000, and 7500 Kelvin respectively. To use white balance presets, all you basically have to do is evaluate the scene you're shooting and pick what you think would be the most appropriate setting. This way, there's less of a chance that your camera will miscalculate and leave you with a poorly hued photo. You can also set the white balance on your camera by using the one touch white balance feature, sometimes called custom white balance as well. And it basically involves using something that has a neutral color, like this one is just a pure white card, it's actually part of a flash. Uh, but you can even use, I've seen people use white t-shirts, white walls, uh, top of a deep freeze, that's white, that works too. And the idea is quite simple. You take this card, you take your lens, and you want to angle it in such a way where you get a fairly neutral tone, not too shiny, not too dark, no shades on it and such. And then you take your camera, you aim it towards the card, and you hit your white uh, balance function button, click, and then your white balance will be set. There are also some products on the market that will uh, kind of help you out with uh, getting uh, better white balance results. Uh, one of those is this. It's called an Expo Disc. And by the way, I'm not being sponsored by this company. I just uh, happen to have their product. Um, bought it at a camera store here. And 
what this does is something similar to a card, except instead of measuring reflected light that comes off of that white card like I showed you, you actually put this onto the lens of your camera like this, you aim it towards the light source, and then you do your one-touch uh, white balance. And that way, you're actually getting fairly accurate results because you're going to take the color temperature directly from the light source or the environment. You might be shooting under cloudy skies, but that doesn't matter. This will still work under those circumstances. Now the final white balance method I'd like to discuss actually has to do with the RAW file format. I'll cover the RAW format in a future video, but put frankly, RAW files contain the original pixel data right off your camera sensor without any further processing applied like sharpness, white balance, saturation, etc. The huge advantage here is that this allows a photographer to load the RAW file in a program that supports it, like Photoshop, and manipulate the white balance settings, among many other settings, after the shot has been taken. This option probably offers the most flexibility because whether the camera got the white balance setting right or not is irrelevant. Here's a series of images from a raw photo. Notice how I changed the white balance settings to whatever I wanted to. Now, like I mentioned, I still prefer to get the shot right when I take it. So in regard to the white balance, I still use a preset white balance setting or the Expo Desk, as well as shooting in RAW, which allows me to fine tune later rather than having to extensively rework a photograph. Well, thanks for joining me this week. I uh, hope you found white balance an interesting topic. And as usual, check out my blog for more information. I have a few links to resources there. And as well, remember to subscribe so you can keep up to date with any videos that I post. Thank you, and I hope to see you next time.